runners lift how often? Hey folks, Dr. Alex Harrison here from Alacrity Endurance. I teamed up with RP on some lifting plans for runners. And the most common question I get along the which plan should I choose vein is how many days a week should I be lifting? If you're here from our endurance sport lifting templates video because you wanted a deeper discussion of how many days per week to lift as a runner, you came to the right place. If you're here because the YouTube algorithm sent you or I linked you here directly from some deep dark recess of an internet forum, welcome. Let's talk about optimal lifting frequency for runners. All right, here's the list of factors that should guide you on how often you should be lifting as a runner. Running frequency, seriousness of your running goals, how interested you are in fat loss or muscle gain, i.e. body composition change, specific strength or sport goals you have alongside running, phase of the running season you're in, how busy are you, how much sleep do you get, and how much do you actually like lifting? And last but certainly not least, how much have you lifted in the past? All right, let's look at how each of those factors should affect how many times a week you resistance train. If you find this video helpful, share it with a friend, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. It'll help me produce more like it faster. Feel free to post your questions in the comments and maybe I'll make a video. All right, running frequency. How should it affect your lifting frequency? If you're running more, you should probably lift less frequently. If you're running six days a week, I'd be hard pressed to recommend more than three sessions a week of lifting. For running performance goals, probably not more than two. If you just like being a muscular runner, well, consider running less first and foremost. But even if you don't, you can bump up your lifting frequency to three, maybe four days a week. If you're running one, two, or three days a week, you'll probably be just fine with lifting three or four days a week. The take home is, there should be an inverse relationship between running frequency and lifting frequency. What about the seriousness of your running goals? How do they factor in? If you're a serious runner and are looking to improve race times, you probably ought to target lifting two days a week or maybe as little as one day a week. If you're just out enjoying the experience of running a couple times a week, shoot, you can easily lift three, four, even five days a week. Going beyond lifting four days a week though, might start to hinder running performance because of both fatigue accumulation and maybe even adaptations that are counter to running performance. Overall, the more serious you are about running, the closer you should be zoning in on resistance training one to two days a week. Less serious, go ahead and lift more often. Next, let's talk about how body composition goals like fat loss or muscle gain should affect lifting frequency choices. The best predictor of the amount of muscle gain you will get from the lifting training that you're doing, and hang with me here, it's complicated, is the total volume of mechanical work accomplished probably biased towards higher emphasis on the total volume of mechanical work that occurs while closely approaching muscular failure. The calorie deficit is what drives fat loss. Calorie deficit in the presence of a strong muscle growth stimulus, like lots of lifting approaching muscular failure, is the most surefire way to cause fat loss. Therefore, whether you're seeking muscle gain or fat loss, higher lifting frequencies as a runner are probably optimal. The truth is, though, as we'll see when we get to considerations about how much you've lifted in the past, you may not need much lifting at all to retain your muscle while accomplishing fat loss as a runner. If you have lots of muscle and you want to retain all of it, it'll probably take more lifting to retain it. Probably the single most important reason someone who runs regularly should lift with higher frequency is if they're interested in specifically gaining muscle. Muscle mass gain is challenging. Challenging enough as it is, and running has a small but meaningful interference effect on muscle growth, specifically in the lower body. So if you want bigger glutes, you might need to train legs three to four days a week to make that happen. The long and short of it is the more you run, the more you'll need to lift if muscle gain is a priority. But before you go and make me rich buying up all the four day a week endurance sport lifting templates, Listen to the last section of this video. It's about how your lifting history might play into it, and it's important. The next consideration for your lifting frequency as a runner is do you have specific strength goals or other sporting goals alongside your running? If you're competing in powerlifting over the winter and running in the spring and summer, you're going to want to keep up with that. Same story for if you play ultimate frisbee or want to be fast and powerful for the church softball league. If these goals are important to you, then higher frequency lifting like three to four days a week is probably optimal. If you don't have any other sport or strength goals specifically, then let the other factors guide your lifting frequency choice. The next of those factors 
The running phase you're in. Are you in season? Prepping for a marathon 12 weeks from now? Four weeks from now? This one's pretty simple. The closer you are to your A race, the lower your lifting frequency should be. As a competitive runner, it might look like two to three days a week for maybe the first month or two of your off season and then move into one to two days a week for most of the harder off season and preseason training. And then subsequently down to one day a week for your in season. If I were writing a program for a recreational runner, I might add one lifting day a week to all the recommendations for a competitive runner. So that would be three to four days a week in the first off-season months, two to three in the rest of the off-season, and then down to two days a week for most of the rest of the season. Maybe in the final week or two leading up to a race, down to one day per week. But I usually don't adjust frequency, and I just reduce volume and intensity instead. On the other hand, for somebody who just likes to run when the weather's good and doesn't really have specific running goals, three to four days a week of lifting when the weather's bad is great, and maybe two or three days a week of lifting the rest of the year is fantastic. Which leads me to the next factors to consider. How busy are you? How much time do you have? How much sleep are you getting? And how much do you actually like lifting? I get the tired nurse or doctor lawyer client all the time who doesn't really love lifting and has been convinced by some running coach somewhere that they should be lifting three days a week or else they're basically risking life and limb and are a horrible person. Folks, if you're not the biggest fan of lifting, pump the brakes. If you're run ragged by life, career, family, you name it, lift less often. You can make great results in running fitness and injury prevention with two days a week of lifting. Now, if you're the college kid that hasn't yet figured out how to fill every spare second of their time with urgent to-do list items, as in you get eight hours of sleep every night and have spare time, or maybe you just manage your life better than I do, and you kind of like the gym, shoot, go four days a week. Generally, the less you're sleeping as a runner, the less you should be lifting. If you're sitting there tweaking your calendar, trying to figure out how to fit that third lifting session into your weekly schedule, the answer is just do two days of lifting, full stop. Maybe even just one. Sleep loss in exchange for more gym sessions as a runner is the worst idea on the planet. Finally, one of the biggest considerations in all training programming is training history. Or in this case, how much have you lifted in the past? If you're literally a former competitive strength and power athlete, and are now enjoying running, I will bet my bottom dollar that you'd be better at running if you lifted less often than you are now, and quite possibly not at all. If you're someone whose goal is fat loss, and maybe you're a little bit stronger than most of your like runnery friends, you'll do well to just put your time and energy into running, diet, good nutrition, and maybe one day a week of lifting. Now, if you're one of that guy's runner friends, and you want to move the scale needle up a bit because you're tired of being identified as the runner in the group, you might benefit from higher lifting frequency than all the other factors would suggest. Takeaways here are, the more you've lifted in the past, the more you can get away with not lifting now if running performance is the goal. Now, the less time you've spent in the gym in the past, the more you should probably consider it now. But also, good news here, the less lifting you'll actually need to see strength improvement. If you haven't lifted seriously in years, you're very likely to have rapid strength gain, even with two days a week of lifting, and you don't have to sell the farm to get three or four days into your schedule. If you're kind of in that place where you kind of like how muscular you are, and you are pretty well built, and you don't want to lose it, but you also want to run more, it's a bit of a catch-22 for you, because while yes, for running performance, you don't need to lift often at all, the more muscle you have and the more time you've had to spend building it in the past, the more frequently you'll need to lift now if 100% muscle retention is the goal while building that running fitness. All right, so that's been my deep dive on how often a runner, or maybe just someone who runs, should lift every week. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, subscribe, push that little notification bell, and I'll do my best to make a video to answer your question. If you know someone who'd benefit from hearing anything I discussed, share it with them. The more feedback we get on our videos, the better. And if you think we might have some useful information to share on other topics, then the more you can interact with us here, the faster we'll be able to produce more videos like this one. Until next time.